of ours as a team when we started this show was to uh, show off people that had a real can-do attitude, and this person exemplifies that to a T. Check him out. He's truly amazing. Watch this. Let's all make a decision to stand up for for life, you know, and that's what my mom did, and, she, and it's really a beautiful thing, you know. And... My son Jake is six and a half, and he's doing great, but we're in a race with time. He hit a double in T-ball last week, he lost his first tooth, and he made his first real joke yesterday. Each day is precious. None of us have any guarantees, but he and all the other children battling this disease, they deserve their best shot. I thank my mother every day for, for leaving that legacy. You probably remember Jake Glazer's mom and his famous dad. Paul Michael Glazer shot to stardom in the 70s as half of TV's most famous cop duo, Starsky and Hutch. But it's what happened to Jake's mom that thrust the family into a very different kind of spotlight. Elizabeth contracted HIV from a blood transfusion in 1981 and unknowingly passed the virus on to her two children, Ariel and Jake. As there were no treatments available for children at the time, Ariel sadly passed away just four years after being diagnosed with the virus. She was only seven years old. A lot of my memories come from photos and stories that people tell me, but she was definitely a very bright girl. Uh, there's a lot of photos of, of her and I making faces into the camera and goofing off and stuff like that. Determined not to let her son suffer the same fate, Elizabeth, together with friends Susan De Laurentiis and Susie Zegan, started the Pediatric AIDS Foundation around the Glazer's kitchen table. One of the things that Elizabeth pioneered in was the focus on children. There was nothing in place to provide for testing drugs for children. She did what she had to do. And that's what, what she was about. Paul was very instrumental in understanding that we were going to have to do a lot of forgiving of doctors, of medicine, of, you know, all the things that you, you take for granted. I want to be able to see the beauty and love in the world. And I won't be able to do that if I'm carrying around a lot of anger and resentment. Jake says his sister helped keep that message alive in her own way. She was in the hospital, and my cousin David was with her and she drew the emblem of the foundation with the rose and the heart and everything that we have has that picture on it. And that was drawn by Ariel in the hospital right before she passed away. And when my cousin asked her, why did you draw this? She looked at it and, she, and at him and she said, well, life's beautiful. She's got no quarrels with life. Elizabeth lost her battle with AIDS in 1994, but this courageous mom and activist lived long enough to see her son get the treatment he was entitled to. I believe I was about seven or eight years old when I first went on medication. Um, the first ones that I went on were AZT and DDI, and that sucked, I hated that. So many things went around from me, dumping them in the toilet, to you know, just sitting there and just, screw it, I'm not taking these meds. You know, I don't want anything to do with this. There was definitely a side of me that was like, maybe didn't want to believe the situation that I was in. For many years, Jake stayed out of the spotlight, but now he says it's time to carry his mother's message forward by touring high school and college campuses, speaking to young people who hold the key to a healthier future. Those, those are the people that are gonna lead the human race into the next generation and the next generation. And that's who really needs to hear the message and, and experience the message. Jake's life-affirming message is so powerful that when students see how healthy he is, they can't believe it. Because his sister passed away so soon after her diagnosis, it's amazing Jake's been healthy for 23 years. Researchers believe it's due to a gene isolated more than a decade ago. Me and my dad went to get the test for the CCR5. Um, we found out we're both positive for that gene and uh, I call it a beautiful gene. It's definitely a blessing, and uh, it slows down the reprodu reproduction of the virus and allows pretty much my immune system to, uh, to handle whatever amounts of HIV enter my immune system and, and fight it off on its own. I went off meds four and a half years ago and uh, doing good. My T cells are shooting through the roof. It really is amazing. I talk to my mom and sister every night before I go to bed, every night. and. Uh, Sometimes it's smiles, sometimes it's tears, but 
My mother and sister lived through me every day. Jake has their initials indelibly etched on his body, their spirits forever in his soul. You know, a lot of people tell me I have the drive and the fight and the, the energy that my mom had. You know, the one thing that, that always, I guess, surprised me about her was how she was able to take on the world and then come back home, let it all go, and jump in the pool with all her clothes on. You know, it was like, how beautiful is that? It's, I mean, I, that's how I'd like to live my life. And how beautiful is he? We've got the amazing Jake Laser here. <laughs> Thank you all so much. You know, it's such, an, it's such an uplifting and amazing story. And I, I know that all of your, most of your life, you've stayed out of the spotlight. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose now? Why did you feel that this was your time to come out and, and be an activist uh, for, for AIDS? Um, well, it was, it was interesting. I first started my public speaking appearances mm -hmm. uh, for the foundation and, and started getting that when I was 19 years old. Uh, there were many opportunities for me to, to speak on behalf of the foundation and to speak on behalf of what I believed in, um, you know, to reporters and shows and to be able to do it in the public eye. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I didn't really feel right for it because I hadn't found myself yet, you know, and my dad has always really pushed that on me, you know. He's always like, we're always working on things. We're never done, you know, and there's always a right time and a right place for everything. None of us are ever done. Ever, right? But it's, so uh, you had to feel like your own life brought you naturally to that yeah, to that yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And why do you choose to, to, to speak to, co you, you've really narrowed this in, oh, yeah. and zeroed in on speaking to young people, touring high schools and colleges. Why, why that choice? Um, I love speaking to everybody, I really do. Uh, there's, there's never a wrong set of ears to talk to. Um, but you know, like I said in the video, it's kids that are 25 and under, they're gonna be leading this generation They're the into decision the future. makers, exactly. They're the decision makers. They're going to be making the policies. They're going to be the next doctors of our future. And uh, as, as good as it is to, to get the donation and as good as it is for, for those people, the executives and, and the people higher up in the world, helping as much as they are, um, the message needs to get to those younger kids because, uh, you know, like I said, in the future, they're, they're our future. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, what's, what's it like? Stepping into some very big shoes, though. I mean, what's it like stepping into mom's <laughs> shoes now? Do you have an appreciation for what this this struggle yeah. must have been like for her? Definitely, definitely. It's. Uh, I mean, it's amazing to me. I think about it every single day. It's. Uh, I think to myself, could I ever possibly even, you know, come close to measuring to what to what my mother even came to accomplish? And uh, when I think about it, you know, it's like I said, she was such a, a free person. And uh, she loved helping people, but at the end of the day, she came back home and she just was able to let it all go, jump in the pool with her clothes on, yeah. take a shot of tequila, you know, <laughs> and just do her thing. And uh, for me, that set such a great example to be able to it's take it on myself mm -hmm. and understand that this is a very big part of my life and it's something that I'm very passionate about and I never want to stop doing it. And at the same time, we just need to enjoy life, you know? And well, that's, your little sister talked about that. Yeah, Arielle did, she did. So up next, we're going to talk about what what your personal life is like. Mm, personal <laughs> life, huh? That one. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's very. I'll tell you, it's very opposite than what uh, than all this. That's for sure. We're going to get into that <laughs> right after this. We have a snack. All right, back. More with Jake after this. In a few.